Hi, good afternoon. This is my individual research. And today, I'll be talking about the Singapore Airport Terminal Services Limited, which is also known as SATS. SATS journey over 60 years has been underpinned by strong operating fundamentals and marked by steady expansion and growth. During this period, SATS has emerged as Singapore's leading provider of gateway services and food solutions and has established long-term relationships through commitment to reliability and quality as well as expanded both its service offerings and network across the globe. For the quantitative analysis, in order to make wise investment choices, quantitative analysis can be used to help determine the company's financial health and determine whether or not it is worth investing. There are many types of ratio that can be derived from financial statements and this can play a part in the decision making process. So first of all, we look at the debt equity ratio, which is the total liabilities divided by the total share capital. This ratio shows whether or not a company is able to pay off its debts, and from that we can see clearly see that SATS is well capable of doing that, as it has lowered its debt equity ratio of 1.89 in 2011 to 1.37 in 2014. <coughs> so we take a look at the interest coverage ratio, which shows how many times a company can pay off its interest using its net profit. So you can see in 2014, it can pay off its interest a total of 58.36 times. However, this is lower than that of the 73.96 times in 2013, and this may be due to the fact that its earnings before interest and tax has been dropped has dropped from 192.3 million to 1,171 million uh, dollars. So next we take a look at the current ratio, which is the current assets over the current liabilities. This ratio indicates whether or not a company will be able to pay off its short term liabilities from its short term assets. And warning signs are triggered when this ratio becomes less than 1 and be cautious if this ratio is less than 1.5. As you can see in 2011, it has a ratio of 1.39 where it shows a cautious rating. However, since after that, it has been, the current ratio has been well over 2 and in 2014, it has a current ratio of 2.2. .2. So next, the operating margin. In 2014, SATS has an operating margin of 9.57% and this has, been, this has been consistent throughout the past 5 years where the operating margin is around 8.85% to 12%. However, the, the net sales have dropped from 2012 to 2014 from a high of 1,871 million to 1,786 million dollars. So next we look at the net margin which is equal to the net profit divided by the net sales multiplied by 100. So the higher the percentage, the better it is because it, it means that the company is in a very profitable sector. So as you can see, the net margin is 10.19%, which is also quite consistently throughout the past 5 years. So next, the return on assets, which is the net profit divided by the total amount of assets multiplied by 100. So this also indicates how profitable the company is relative to its assets and ability of management in generating profits from assets. As you can see, it has a return on assets at a percentage of 9.01%, which is also quite consistently over the past 5 years. So next we take a look at the return on equity. And this ratio provides percentage return on shareholders equity. Again, you can see that over the past 5 years, the trend has been quite consistent and it shows that the company is in a relatively stable condition. Next we take a look at the return on capital employed, which is the net profit divided by the total number of debt plus total share capital multiplied by 100%. So, in 2014, it has a 20.9% of return on capital employed. So, this shows that for every $1 of total capital employed, there is a return of 20 cents. And this 20.9% is also quite consistently from the past 5 years. So, for the revenue growth, so in 2014, it has a re revenue growth of negative 1.78%, which means that the sales have been decreasing. 
However, as you can see from 2010 to 2012, there is a high revenue growth, which, which most likely means that during those periods, SAT has been growing very well. And for now, it has been in a relatively stable condition, and there isn't any drastic changes in the revenue growth. So we look, next we look at the earnings per share growth, which is this year's earnings per share divided by last year's earnings per share and multiplied by 100%. As you can see from the graph, it shows that in 2014, it has an earnings, earnings per share for six, $0.16. Cents. This is 3% lower than the previous year, which has $0.16.6 cents of earnings per share. Next, we take a look at the book value growth. So in 2014, there is no changes in the book value and it remains at $1.26. However, this is lower than that of 2012 when he said he has a $1.36 of book value. For the P-E ratio, it is the current market price divided by the earnings per share. So as of March 31st, 2014, SATS has a P.E. ratio of $18.88 which means that for every dollar of earnings, investors are willing to pay a price of $18.88. This has been on an increasing trend from 2010 to 2014 where it has increased from $15.93 to $18.88. And again, you can, as you can see, the share prices have also increased from 2.66 to 3.04 during this period. However, earnings per share has remained relatively constant as it has decreased a 0.6 cents from the past 5 years. So for a price to book ratio, is the current market price divided by the book value. So the current price to book ratio is $2.41 and it has increased from 1.94 in 2010. This may be due to the fact that the share price has increased from 2.66 to 3.04. So next is the dividend yield, where the dividend equals to dividend per share divided by the current market price. So this indicates dividend return in percentage terms of total investment. And a high dividend yield will most likely attract investors to invest in the company. At 4.28%, I feel that, that this dividend yield is not a bad choice. And SATS has been regularly giving dividend yields over the past 5 years. And the average dividend is around 17 cents. So next we take a look at a PEG ratio, which is a price earning divided by earnings growth and due to the fact that, that the earnings have decreased over the past few years the PEG ratio is currently at a negative of 12.93 due to the negative earnings growth so for the price earnings to sales ratio we can see that it has a ratio of negative 10.61 again this is due to the negative growth over the over the past few years so next we'll look at the qualitative analysis and technical analysis is a method of using charts to predict and, and identify patterns that can help predict the price movement of the security so first of all we'll take a look at the Bollinger Band and this can be used to predict the volatility of stocks as well as the price movement of stocks when prices are near the lower moving average, it may represent a support level where prices may bounce back up after touching the lower moving average. So as you can see from the graph, there is a test. The SAT's uh, stock chart is currently near the lower moving average, indicating that there might be a chance of the stock regaining its value after touching the lower moving average. However, if it breaks this, support level, it may well continue to drop further. Yep. So next, I will, uh, I, will be, I will be talking about the moving average convergence divergence. 
So when the MACD crosses the signal line, it represents a buy or sell signal. As you can see, the MACS is crossing the signal line at a positive node. Hence, this may indicate a buy signal where investors may choose to invest at this, at this time. And this sentiment is relatively similar to the one in the middle band where it, it may indicate that the stock price may rise. So next is the relative strength index and the key points of the relative strength index are said to be 30 and 70. At the point of 30, the RSI suggests that the stock is oversold and become likely to be undervalued. At 70, it means that the stock is overbought and the prices might start to drop. As you can see, SATS has a relative strength of 51.22, which means that it is neutral and there is actually not much buying and selling of it. And this may indicate that the price will be stable for the time being. So lastly is the competitor's analysis and SATS main competitors are Aircraft Service International Group and Changi International Airport Services. However, SATS will most likely continue its dominance in this sector as it has a major share market of over 80%. So finally, whether to invest or not to invest. Based on the two different types of analysis, I feel that it is possible to invest in SATS. Not only has the debt equity been going on a downward trend, it also gives a relatively stable dividend with a high relative return on capital employed. So this is it. Thank you very much for your attention.